Welcome back, F1 fanatics. Today we're diving deep into the magic behind Gasly's stunning top five finish at the 2024 Qatar Grand Prix. Get ready to uncover the secrets of Alpine's revolutionary front wing, a design directly inspired by their 2025 F1 car. And guess what? We've got this exclusive scoop straight from F1 officials, so buckle up and let's explore the engineering marvel that's turning heads on the grid. Alpine's new shorter nose made its debut in Qatar, but as there was only one available, it was used on the car of Pierre Gasly, while Esteban Ocon continued with the old specification. The nose has been designed in conjunction with a redesign of the wing elements, and technical director David Sanchez confirmed in Qatar that it previews an aspect of the team's 2025 car. The key difference between the old and new designs is that the nose of the car now connects to the bottom flap instead of the main part. This change creates a small gap that directs air under the car. As the air moves through this gap, the curved shape of the nose speeds up the air, creating a low pressure area that improves the car's performance. But in order to fully exploit the new airflow, the flaps have been redesigned with a significantly different geometry on the inner sides. Alpine say this has improved the loading of the front wing itself. The nose has been shortened to be compatible with the new front wing design and its detached first element, which improves the airflow interaction around the car, said the team in an update document. The new design helps the airflow better between the nose and the flaps. While the new nose setup aims to improve airflow further down the car, the redesigned wing flaps increase the downforce on the front wheels. With this generation of ground effect car, there is a tricky challenge in increasing downforce without adversely affecting the balance of the car. The natural limitation is creating downforce on the front axle. This limits how much downforce can be effectively used at the rear. It's a tricky compromise, says Sanchez. You can increase the potential of the car, but you have to ask, is the downforce on the right axle and will it be usable? With a ground effect car, you have very few levers to shift balance because there is not much ride height migration. Ride height migration refers to how the front and rear heights of the car change compared to each other at different speeds and when braking. With older cars before 2022, the back of the car was usually much higher than the front at low speeds and during braking. But at higher speeds, the ride height's front rear would be more nearly equal. This helps the car handle better. It improves the grip at the front at low speeds to reduce understeering and balances the car at high speeds to reduce oversteering. In these new F1 cars, the ground effect floors require the rear of the car to be very low to create the most downforce. Because of this, the difference in height between the front and rear of the car doesn't change much at different speeds. The old setup allowed for more height changes between the front and rear, which helped balance the car better. But now, with the rear needing to stay low, there's less ability to adjust this balance through ride height changes. The new wing flaps on the front of the car create more downforce, which means the front of the car sticks to the track better. Because the front has more downforce now, the car can also use more downforce at the back without upsetting the balance. This is why the car's nose has been redesigned. The new nose works better with these changes, helping to improve overall performance by making sure both the front and rear downforce are optimized. That's all for today, guys. If you enjoyed this, make sure to hit that subscribe button for more exclusive F1 insights straight from the insiders. Stay tuned and keep racing.